Welcome back. Today we're talking flexibles, doing a quick overview of Sinterit's Flexa Gray material for selective laser centering on the Lisa and Nils lineup machines. Uh, so flexibles, tons of applications for this. Flexa Gray in particular is one of the most dynamic of the flexibles they offer. Not only can you change the laser power to make it more or less flexible, but all of the flexible materials have a 100% or 0% refresh rate, meaning you can reuse all of the used powder. In the fine print, they do recommend adding 10% of fresh powder, but you don't actually have to, and frankly, that's pretty cool. Flexa Gray in particular is a TPU, or a thermoplastic polyurethane-based material, giving it the flexible, rubber-like feel that we all know and enjoy in things like like this. This is awesome. Flexibles. So where are you actually going to see these flexibles used in industry and business? Really, it's standard rubber items like cable protectors, product grips, uh, seals, gaskets, tubes, hoses, shock or vibration absorbers, protectors like phone cases or bottle shrouds, etc. Now, what kind of machine do you need to print these? The entire line of Lisa's from Sintra is capable of Flexa Gray. Uh, in addition to the more industrial NILS 480 system, uh, the material only needs the Sintra Studio Basic, so there's no advanced software or anything. You can get any of the machines and print this material. Now, like the other powders in SLS technology, you don't have to use supports because the powder actually supports the parts itself. So if you want to print a huge batch of rubber feet for some product you make, or maybe a whole build volume of customized phone cases, uh, this is a great material for the job and a great technology for it. Uh, SLS technology is, is really, really cool. Um, and you can print pretty much any geometry without worrying about support material. And on top of that, layer adhesion, or Z-axis strength, isn't an issue with SLS, unlike extrusion-based printers. Now, if you're enjoying this breakdown, hit that like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what stuff you want us to get into in future videos. Uh, and we've got a lot more stuff coming. So let's get into some of the basic material specs. The adjustable hardness. You can print more rigid or a little bit softer with an easy flip of a switch in the software, just using more or less laser power. I've actually got an example of that here. I've got the more rigid and the more soft, and you, I can, I, I mean, you might not see this on camera too much, but this is the rigid and this is the flexible. It's, it's significant. That's actually very significantly more soft feeling. And this one's more, I don't know, maybe like a pencil eraser or something like that versus a more like a rubber band, I would say. So it is 100% reusable, meaning you don't have to add any new powder to reuse the old powder that wasn't used in the previous build. It's got great chemical resistance and you do not need any nitrogen in this material in the build chamber, making it that much more accessible. The sure hardness in the type A scales is 70A to 90A or so. Uh, it's harder than a pencil eraser, but softer than a leather belt, sort of like a car tire. Uh, so as far as uh, temperatures, it's got a pretty high melting point at 160C, uh, but a softening point around 67 Celsius. You're looking at like 150F or so. Uh, so you can use it outside and you can use it in, you know, in your car and not worry about it drooping and melting and things like that. It's got a tensile strength of 3.7 MPI, a Young's mod of uh, 7.8 megapascals, according to an old data sheet that I found. An elongation of break of 136%. It is quite flexible, as you can see. Uh, now, the older, older data sheet that I found actually said 210% on the XY, so maybe it was a different method, maybe they changed materials, but you get a lot of elongation either way. Now, all the data sheets are available on visionminer.com slash so go check that out for the links, and there is more data available if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but for now, let's get in and check some example parts out. So right here, immediately, I have a couple things to show. You already saw the, uh, just the sample bars, you know, but something like this, um, as an example of what you can print. I believe this was actually done in TPE, which we'll get into in another video. Um, but, you know, this is, it's sealed on one end and it's got an opening on the other and it's like an accordion uh, baffle thing. And so, you know, it's like a pressure chamber type thing. If I wanted this to actually be air and water tight, you would want to seal it. Uh, but, I mean, that's just, it's neat to be able to print that and not see layer lines or anything else like that pull it straight out of the printer, sandblast it, and you've got your part. That's pretty slick. Um, this is another flexible. This is actually Flexa Bright, as it, you know, suggested by the light color, but you know, I can take this whole thing and just crush it in my hand 
and then it pops right back out. Uh, it's pretty similar. We got another video on this material as well, but printing flexibles on SLS really enables a lot of possibilities. I mean, look at the amount of detail going into this model here. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then you can see on the inside too, it's all super, super thin walls. So being able to do that is pretty awesome. So uh, let's check out some pictures and slideshows, get a little bit more inspiration for uh, what type of parts you could make, what you would use this for. Uh, they used uh, one of their flexes and they created this mask, undoubtedly during the days of early COVID, uh, but it's like a, a mask, so it'll actually flex and fit around the face and it takes those replaceable filters and everything. And as you can see on here, the inside of the part, this is, I love this kind of thing where they made an ISO, not an ISO grid, but a, um, like a, an internal grid structure, a, uh, it's a lattice structure. You got the lattice structure inside, the whole thing is flexible. So just a cool way to add some rigidity, but still save material. Um, and of course, somebody wearing it in a different color. Uh, it's pretty sweet. They got a whole case study on that that is available. Miss South Africa. Okay, fashion. Uh, flexibles are actually a pretty big deal in fashion because you can make stuff that you can wear. You can make bracelets, dresses, all sorts of other stuff that's flexible. Uh, Chainmail is one of those things we'll be printing soon, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see that. Uh, they printed nice little flowers to go on a bra and underwear for uh, Miss South Africa, I believe. Let's see here. 3D printed fashion. And we've got the babes here. Very nice, very cool stuff. Intricate detail. As you can see from these photos, it's, um, you know, you zoom right in there and you've got all sorts of just details and tiny features. And, you know, the whole thing moves and is flexible. So it's not like a rigid part that's going to poke into the person that's wearing it. Uh, definitely some interesting applications here. Plenty of examples, plenty of things. What would you do with flexible materials on an SLS machine? Uh, let us know in the comments down below, or if you've got an idea you want made, actually reach out. Basically, we'll take your part, we'll fill the build volumes and see what the actual return on investment would be in different materials uh, based on the density and the time it takes to print, even the electricity and depreciation of the machinery. So we get you a really nice PDF on that if you're wondering. Otherwise, check out all our other videos for uh, other comparisons on other materials. And we also sell systems for high temperature FDM for like Peak and Ultima and stuff, uh, 3D scanners, and now of course SLS. So we're here to help, just reach out. We'll answer all your questions and thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.